Hi guys, Patrice here from Pixino Studio and today I'd like to do a video tour on one of our most popular script and that is geek to do script. Now the reason why I'm doing this video tour is because a lot of you guys have asked me a lot of questions about the different features on geek to do script. So I'm hoping that this video actually touches on some of those answers that you guys are looking for. Now it's impossible to do a video tour that covers all the features on geek to do script because if I do that the video is probably gonna be really boring and really long so I'm just gonna do a quick video tour and try to touch on the most important features but I do want to let you guys know that once you purchase geek to do script it comes with a lot a lot of features to allow anyone start and run a successful freelance marketplace business because geek to do script is a freelance marketplace script all right, let's go ahead and get started. So right here, this is the marketing website. We actually created a page and loaded it with a couple of user accounts, a couple of admin accounts, and a couple of test cards. So you can actually use these credentials to log in to the demo script. I do, however, recommend that you create an account on the demo script in order to experience the whole process. So let's go ahead and launch the website demo as well as launch the admin panel demo because we're gonna do a video tour on the admin panel all right so once you purchase the gig to do script and install on your server you're gonna see a website exactly like this if you notice some things are already preloaded in like the categories the sliders the proposal cards the main categories and so on and you can actually change all these items from the admin panel so right here we have different main categories and when you hover on the main category it reveals another menu with subcategories that are related to that main category so let's go ahead and click on this main category this is actually going to open up a page with different proposals that are related to that main category so all these proposals right here are related to graphics and design now, other freelance marketplace websites like Fiverr call theirs gigs, but since gig is trademarked to Fiverr, we're going to call ours proposals. So on this page right here, you can actually filter these proposals based on different subcategories. You can change the proposals entirely by clicking on the new main category. You can also filter by showing the proposals that sellers are online right now, you can filter it by delivery time, filter it by seller level, and you can also filter it by seller language. So let's talk more about the home page. So below the main category header, we have the slider section. So you can add as many sliders as you want and change the text directly from the admin panel. Below that, we have the proposal cards. Again, you can edit this from the admin panel. You can change the text, change the image, edit the URL. So basically, you can have a proposal card linked to a main category page, or you can have a proposal card linked to an external page, so a page that's not actually on the platform. Below that, we have a section for main category, so you can change the icon and change the text from the admin panel. So this section is mainly for marketing. You can actually change the text as well and change the image from the admin panel. So right here we have the top feature proposals. Now we created a system where users can actually pay to feature their proposals for a certain number of days. So basically a user will pay to feature his or her proposals on different parts of the website. So the fee users pay to feature their proposals and the number of days the proposals are featured for are all determined by the admin in the admin panel. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So let's go ahead and sign in. So with the system, users can actually create accounts and log into those accounts with uh, their Facebook and Google accounts. So let's sign in as Pat. So once you sign in, you're gonna see a fancy loader, which that say that you know says "Hey" and the user's first name. So after you successfully signed in, you're gonna see a home page exactly like this. Now this section right here, you can actually edit it from the admin panel, so you can add as many sliders, edit the text from the admin panel. 
So right here, this is another section for featured proposals. So basically, users pay to feature the proposal. So it's fair to actually show those proposals on different parts of the website. So this is another section that featured proposals can be found. Now, if we, if we click on view all, it's actually going to open up a page that has more featured proposals. And again, we can filter them based on these items on the sidebar. Let's go back to the home page. So below the featured proposals, we have a section for top proposals. Now this section is configured in the admin panel and the proposals here are based on the number of orders and the number of good ratings. And again, this section is configured in the admin panel. If you notice, the sellers here are top rated sellers. So on the platform, there are different kind of seller levels. So there is a new seller, there's a level one seller, a level, a level one seller, there's the level two seller, and there are the top rated sellers. And all these levels are based on the number of orders that sellers received and the number of good reviews. And again, all that, all those items, all those parameters are being configured from the admin panel. So below that, we have a section for random proposals. So basically, each time I refresh the page, it's going to be a new proposal here. And if you click on view all, it's going to open up a page that will review, uh, review all the proposals on there. So below that, we have a section for buyer request. Now, in order to explain buyer request, I would like to explain more about the geek to do script. So geek to do script is a freelance marketplace script and a freelance marketplace script is a script for a website where people in search of a particular skill go on there to hire to search and hire that skill. So let me give an example. Let me explain it based on an example. So Pat, Pat has a project and Pat doesn't really see a proposal here that matches that project. So Pat has decided that he will rather post the project on the platform and have other sellers contact him. So since Pat has chosen that route, what Pat is going to do is he's going to click on post a request. Now this is going to open up another page which I'm going to show you guys later. But in that page, he's going to type out the project details and or upload a file that contains all the project details typed out in it. And he's going to, he's actually going to choose a category. So basically after he types out the project details, he has to choose a category that is related to that project. So either graphics and design, uh, programming and tech, whatever. And after he has chosen a category, he's going to choose the amount of days he wants the project to be delivered in and he's going to write out his budget. So once Pat does that, he can now post the request. Now this section right here, this section right here shows all the requests that are based on categories that the sellers have proposals under. So basically, Patricia needs an experienced PHP developer. So why Patricia was creating this request, she chose the category programming and tech because programming and tech is what matches this request right here. And since Pat has proposals under programming and tech, he's able to see this request. So basically, sellers are able to see requests that they have proposals under the category that the requests are based on. So if, say, another user or buyer creates a request and chooses and maybe choose the graphics and design category, Pat is actually not going to see that request just because Pat has no proposals under graphics and design. So the reason why we did it that way is because we want all requests to fall in front of the right sellers. So basically, sellers who have you know proposals under the category that that request is being made on. So that's kind of how this part works. So let's talk a little bit about the buyer request section here. So right here, you can see the, uh, the buyer's name. You can see the title of the request. You can see some information about the request. Some users might actually upload an, a file. You know, it could be a Word file, a, a T, TXT file, or an image or whatever containing more information about that request. Then right here, we see the number of offers. So basically, a 
buyer or a user can post a request and have a bunch of sellers actually send offers so basically if a seller is trying to do that request the seller just easily clicks on send offer and sends an offer and that offer is pretty much the seller saying he can do that request so now when Patricia posted this request you know she chose the category programming and tech so this request is gonna appear in front of all the sellers that have proposals on the programming and tech and so most of the sellers are going to actually send requests to Patricia and Patricia wants this project done in six days and her budget is two hundred dollars so now let's actually click on here this opens up a page with more buyer requests so based, so these are all the active buyer requests that are based on proposals that are based on categories that Patrice Pat has proposals under. So now let's talk a little bit about this section right here. So now a seller has just 10 offers to send to buyer requests. So basically, if there are 24 active buyer requests here, Pat can send only 10 offers per day. So within 24 hours, a seller can send only 10 offers. So take for example, Pat has read this uh, buyer request he has downloaded this file and he can actually do this project so what Pat is gonna do is Pat is gonna click on send offer and now once he clicks on that this pop-up box is gonna appear now this pop-up box has a proposal right here and this is Pat's proposal now Pat has a lot of proposals Pat actually has eight proposals however Pat has just one proposal under the category programming and tech so this is the only proposal Pat has under programming and tech and that's why that proposal appears here if Pat had more proposals on the programming and tech and web programming all those proposals will appear here but he has just one so that's the one that appears here and again this is Pat's proposal so Pat is gonna go ahead and choose that proposal and he's gonna click on continue then here this is essentially where he writes out his pitch now like I said before when a buyer posts a request a bunch of sellers are gonna send that buyer offer so it will make sense for a buyer to pretty much try to convince you know it will make sense for a seller to pretty much try to convince a buyer that he or she can do that task so we're gonna go ahead and type out this before please hire me so that's essentially a pitch so now um, Patricia wants this done in six days and since Pat can do that in five he's gonna choose five now she her budget is two hundred dollars you know what we're just gonna go ahead and stick with two hundred but if there are more offers here you know it makes sense for the seller to put and maybe 150 or something but we're just gonna leave it at 200 so we're gonna submit this offer and Patricia is gonna receive the offer and if you notice here this is gonna now go down to nine so now Pat has just nine offers he can send within this 24 hours so this tab right here just records all the offers with Pat as a seller has actually sent on the platform so now let's go back to the home page Now let's talk about this sidebar right here. Um, so this section right here, buy again. So these are the top five most recent items, Pat proposals that Pat purchased. So Pat can easily just click on a uh, proposal here and just purchase it. Uh, recently viewed. These are the top five most um, top five recently viewed proposals. So Pat can you know click on it and purchase it if he wants to. So now, this section right here is more like a trigger. So I received a lot of questions, you know, with people asking me, you know, what's the difference between a buyer and a seller on the platform? Now, everybody starts as a user on the platform, and what distinguish a distinguishes a buyer from a seller are proposals. So basically, when a 
user creates a proposal and submits that proposal and the admin approves that proposal that user automatically becomes a seller so that's kind of what distinguishes distinguishes a buyer from a seller now this item right here is just to trigger users who don't have proposals but have certain skills to actually create proposals so basically if a user clicks on get started it's gonna open up a page that is more more or less like a marketing page that just kind of tells the user how it works and that user can easily just click on here and create his or her first proposal so let's go back to the home page now let's talk about the proposal boxes here so this is a proposal and here you can see the proposal image you can see the seller name you can see the seller level so we talked about seller levels uh, you can see the proposal title you can see the uh, the ratings you can see if the seller is online or not if the seller is not online you're just gonna see uh, let's actually okay you're gonna see something like this so Amit is a seller and Amit is not online right now so that's why you don't see the online status right there so so now I'm gonna explain a little bit about this affiliate link because I've received a lot of questions about this item right here now it's important to note that geek to do actually comes with two referral systems and affiliate link is one of the referral system and how and this works this is just an item that allows users to help other users make money through the platform and this item is actually configured why this so it's configured by the seller why the seller is actually creating a proposal so this is an optional item so a seller chooses to do this or not so how does it work so Jess, why Jess was creating this proposal, she configured a section where she um, she's awarding 20% to anyone who shares this unique link on any platform. It could be Facebook, it could be Twitter, you know, anyone who shares this unique link on that platform and have other people click on this unique link and purchase this proposal. So basically, as an example, if Pat if Pat is looking for a way to make actual income, what Pat is going to do is Pat is going to look for those proposals that the sellers have configured the affiliate link. And so if Pat finds that, like, you know, Pat comes on here and he sees that Jess has actually configured that link. So Pat, what Pat is going to do is Pat is going to click on this. He's going to copy this link and he's going to post this link on his Facebook wall and say if Pat's friend James clicks on this link and purchases this proposal. Now Pat is going to, you know, be awarded 20% of this $20, you know, so that's kind of how it works. So, you know, sellers giving opportunities for other users to make money through the platform, you know, by sharing their proposals so it's kind of like a win-win because that seller now uh, you know other users are gonna share that seller's services on different platforms and you know have other people purchase it so I received a lot of questions about that so that's kind of how why I was explaining more about it all right so here we have the favorite we're actually gonna talk about this when we get back let's go ahead and click on this proposal here so once you click on the proposal, it actually opens up a page with that proposal, with more information about that proposal. So here, everything is pretty much self-explanatory. You know, like here, you see the proposal title, you see the number of orders in queue at that moment, and if this proposal is inappropriate, you can actually you can actually report it. So you can just report it by clicking here. You know, then typing out your message and send it so the admin is gonna see this and the admin can now look into it so here you have the main category and you have the subcategory you have the proposal images so if you had a video you're gonna see that here you can just play it from here you see some more information about the proposal here and here you just see the reviews the ratings related to that proposal and you can filter it right here you see the price for the proposal you see the number of days the seller can deliver that you know proposal if someone orders it you can you know 
change the quantity then here these are the different extras so while a seller is creating a proposal that seller can actually add a couple of extras for that proposal then here this is still another section for the affiliate link now I received a, a bunch of questions again about this section right here and I'm gonna explain it with another example you know again I explain more about the referral link but I had another question that if uh, someone clicks on the unique link and you know adds extras so does that does the person who shared the link get 20% of the original price which is $20 or 20% of the total price which is you know might come up to $50 and to answer that, I'll give the example again. If Pat, you know, clicks on this link right here and shares it on his Facebook wall, and his friend James come clicks on that link and lands on this page, and you know, adds a couple of extras, Pat is actually gonna get twenty percent of the total amount. You know, so if James, you know, orders this for fifty dollars, you know, Pat gets twenty percent of fifty dollars, and it's. It's important to note that Pat only gets that 20% after the admin has approved it. So the admin is going to see all the referrals come in the back end and the admin has to approve it before Pat is awarded that 20%. And that 20% is just going to go to his shopping balance. So on below that, we can you, um, users can actually share the proposals on you know different social media platforms. So here we have the picture of the seller and we have the batch. So different seller levels have different badges. So you have a different batch for level two. You have a different batch for uh, top rated. So here you just more information about the seller. And actually clicking on here actually opens up the seller's profile. So we're going to click on here in a little bit, but let's talk about the bottom part of the proposal. So here we can see all the proposals offered by this seller. And here we can just see recently viewed proposals. Now let's go ahead and click on Jesse's profile. So that's going to open up this profile page. You know with more information about Jess so we can see when she joined the platform her recent delivery uh, her level we can see more proposals that she's created then here we can see all the reviews she's had so <clears throat> all the reviews she's had for each of these proposals they all appear here and this kind of just sums up everything and divides it <clears throat> so yeah so now let's go back to let's go back to the main page, the home page. So um, some other items like the favorite item, I some items on the platform actually work real time ish. So basically, if I if you notice here, there's nothing on our favorites page because once you click on here, it's gonna open up our favorites page, which I'm gonna show you guys later. But if clicking on here just adds it to our favorite page right so right away. So if you look right here and if we click here, you see it just adds up right away, and this adds to the favorite page and you know that's kind of one aspect of the platform that works real time another aspect that works real time is messaging so basically if Pat is signed in as a seller and he's on you know the dashboard and he receives a message from another user Pat sees that message right away so that message is gonna slide here and I'm actually gonna go on my other computer and send Pat a message from another user account so so as you can see this message came in so i sent a message from jesse's account from my other computer and it comes in right away so you don't have to refresh the page it just comes in right away and if you notice it actually there's a sound that comes with it so that sound just kind of tells you that you know you've either received the message or you've received an order or you know if you receive anything from your notifications you actually it just slides through without you refreshing the page so I'm gonna send another message so you can get the sound so you kinda of get that sound when it comes in and you can actually you can actually 
you can actually choose to turn off that sound from your uh, from the account settings and I'm going to show you guys how to do that so when a message comes in you get that sound and you can easily just if you click on this it's actually going to open up the message area you know where you can see your chat history with that particular user so so right here we can see a chat history so we're going to come back to this message area so let's go back to that to the home page and again so that uh, that real-time messaging doesn't only work for messages it works if the seller receives an order that comes in right away with the sound as well except if you disable the sound if you receive a message from the admin you know you get that as well so whatever comes up in this notification here you know you receive that kind of real-time notification that slides slides out so now let's talk a little bit about the items at the top here obviously here this is the section for the main categories right here we have an icon for the dashboard this here for the notifications we have the top most recent notifications it comes with the timestamp as well uh, same thing for messages then here is you know a favorites page so basically if we click here it's gonna take us to the favorites page uh, this is our card then if we open this up here it's gonna reveal another menu right here is the shopping balance it just shows us how much we have on our shopping balance all right so we're pretty much through with the home page let's go ahead and go to the dashboard now if you notice when we click on the dashboard the menu here is going to change it's going to change from main category to another menu to this menu right here so this dashboard page kind of gives us like a quick summary of what's going on on the the website and this is mostly helpful for people who are actually selling on the on the platform so people who actually have proposals and actually getting orders so here you know we can tell that we have 21 completed orders you know we've delivered four and so on and so forth so here we kind of see a contact book with you know all the seller all the buyers that have purchased from us and us I mean Pat from Pat um, we can easily just click on that user's profile or we can you know see our chat history with that user then same thing for sellers so all the you know uh, <coughs> sellers we've purchased proposals from so uh, in terms of the different tabs here uh, this one here is exclusively for people who have proposals on the platform people who have proposals on the platform and are actually selling receiving orders so this is the menu for them this one is generally for every user you know people who are purchasing from you know purchasing making purchasing proposals from different sellers and stuff like that so let's go ahead and get started with this tab right here so let's get started with orders so basically these are all the orders Pat as a seller has received so these are all the orders he's received on the platform and here we also have another uh, menu that is tab so there are different tabs so these are all the orders Pat has delivered all the orders that completed and all the cancelled orders so I've received a few questions that what is the difference between uh, delivered and completed so now a seller once a seller receives an order from a buyer the seller is obviously gonna do that order and once the seller is completed doing that order he then delivers the order so now when he delivers the order it just remains on delivered state and once the seller once the buyer sees the order and is okay with the order the buyer has to complete the order by rating that order so the buyer has to manually go on there and break the order and that's what completes an order so basically a seller doesn't receive the funds for that order until it's completed now we understand that there are some buyers who just go once their order is being delivered they usually they, some buyers actually just go and download that order they don't download that delivery and some of them don't actually rate rate the order so we created an, another system on the platform called the order complete so uh, the admin can set a number of days that uh, an order can auto complete so let's take for example pat delivers an order and um 
in the admin sets in the back end the order complete days are three days uh, so if pat delivers that order and the buyer doesn't complete the order by rating the order within three days the order is going to auto complete in three days so that's a brief summary so i'm going to show you that right now so let's go to deliver let's actually see the items we've actually pat has actually delivered so here you can see the status for the different things if you click on like active you can see more stuff uh, so let's click on this item so uh, the buyer here was Tyrone so Tyrone ordered one of our proposals and so Pat Pat did the proposal and he delivered it so Tyrone hasn't Tyrone hasn't completed the order yet by rating it and that's why it shows here that the buyer has two days to complete this order otherwise it's going to be automatically marked as completed now Pat delivered this order yesterday and that's why it shows two days left so when Tyrone logs in he's going to see something here he's going to see that he has two days to complete you know the order otherwise it's going to be auto automatically marked as completed this is because a buyer Sorry, this is because a seller doesn't receive the funds for um, an order unless it's completed. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the order page. So <clears throat> here we have this bar right here. This bar right here actually gives you a summary of what is going on on the order. So here we have the order number, which is very important. So basically, if uh, a user, so by user, I mean either a buyer or a seller has a problem with the order. So the buyer can open up a, a, a ticket here and that buyer has to know the has to give the order number so the admin can trace the order so uh, so here kind of gives you a summary about the order so the status right here is just delivered it's not completed so it needs to be completed for the seller to receive funds all right so here now we have the uh, this section we have the order number we can click we can view the proposal you know this the original proposal for this so if we actually just click on here so below that here we have a buyer which is Tyrone you know still have the stages here we have the date the order was placed and here here we have the name so buyers can actually communicate in the order page so here this is this is our proposal that was purchased you know so you can just click on here and it opens it all right so buyers and sellers can communicate with each other on the order place on the uh, order screen and here you know tyrone sent a message and you know if a if a buyer or a seller sent an um and maybe a, an, a bad message or an inappropriate message um the user can easily just report that by clicking on report and you know just choose a read a category and just you know type out a message and send it to the admin and the admin can look into it so that's kind of why we added that there and uh here obviously we explain this and this is a section the seller can deliver the order again you know so tyrone is going to see this and he can accept or he can request for a review uh, sorry he can request for changes and stuff like that uh, so if you know if me as the seller if Pat has a problem with the order Pat can also click on the resolution center and request to cancel the order so he just choose a category writes out a message and just submits the cancellation request so let's go back to orders so this was for delivered order so now let's go to completed orders and again completed orders are orders that have either been order completed or the buyer has manually completed it by rating the order. So let's click on one item here. So as you can see, again, this bar gives a summary of like what's going on with the order and it shows here that order has delivered. So we delivered the order and the buyer actually completed the order by rating the order. So that's why it says order delivered, you know, you as in Pat earned $38 and stages completed so now the admin in the back end admin panel sets a number of days after an order that a seller can withdraw money so basically the order if the admin sets six days for withdrawal so basically this 
pad can withdraw this $38 only six days after this order has been delivered, has been completed. So if the admin says seven days, you know, um, PAC is only able to withdraw this $38 seven days after the order has been completed. So that's kind of how it works. All right, so it's been completed. You see that resolution tab is no more there because the order is already completed. That is all done with. Um, and the buyer rated the, the seller and the seller, you know, can in turn rate the buyer and the seller can update his review as well. So, yeah. So let's go back to orders and go to the cancel tab. So here in the cancel tab, obviously, uh, the in this case, the buyer clicked on the resolution center and sent the cancellation request. So again, this place gave a summary of what's going on. So order canceled and payment has been refunded to buyer the stages for that is canceled so this is kind of what happened so Amit Amit clicked on resolution center and he sent the cancellation request so Pat as a seller once a, um, the cancellation request is sent the seller sees that cancellation request and the seller can either accept it or decline it in this case the seller declined the cancellation request that's why it showed uh, cancellation request declined by seller. However, Amit went ahead to send another cancellation request and this time Pat the seller was fed up so he agreed, he accepted the request and that's why it says order cancelled by mutual agreement. You know sometimes a buyer can send a bunch of cancellation requests and the uh, uh, seller can keep canceling it, declining it. In that case, the buyer can now go ahead to click on customer support and you know actually take the issue to the admin. And the admin has the power to cancel any order. So basically, if the admin cancels this order, it's going to say order canceled by admin. And the amount again will be refunded to the buyer. So we're kind of done now with the with the orders tab with the orders link so now let's go to my proposals so basically like i said other freelance marketplaces like you know fiverr call those gigs but you know we call us proposals now this is this is a page that i can see all the active proposals so these are all of pat's active proposals so the proposals that are actually live on the platform right now uh, so here we have different tabs, you know, post proposal. So basically, since Pat has so many proposals, sometimes he might want to pause some of those proposals if in case he doesn't really want to get orders from those proposals at that point. So he can easily just go to the proposal and click on deactivate proposal. And once he deactivates a proposal, it goes up to the pause proposals. And once it goes to the pause proposals, you know, it's not live on the website anymore. So no other user can see it or order it so it's just it's just hiding up right here and pat can actually decide now to you know activate the proposal now if he activates the proposal it goes back you know live on the website so that's kind of how pause proposals work pending proposals so now on the platform before once a user creates a proposal the admin has to manually Go through that proposal and approve that proposal so you know if the enemy hasn't gotten to the proposal yet it's still considered as pending proposal and now pending proposals are not live on the website yet until the admin approves it so now require modification so basically once a user say pat adds a new proposal the admin can view the proposal and if the admin has a few changes the admin wants the user to do the admin can just write a message and that um, that user now can see what the admin wants changed so basically Pat created this proposal supreme graphics and um, the admin saw that proposal and the admin requested for a modification so the admin wants more information for this proposal and so now what Pat can do is this proposal is obviously not live so only Pat can see it. So what Pat can do now is Pat can edit the proposal, you know, do what the, the admin wants done. And once Pat is done doing that, he then submits the, the proposal now for approval. Now, this we created this and we also created a function in the admin panel where 
the admin can decide to either manually approve proposals or you know proposals are automatically approved so basically the admin can set it in a way that you know once any user creates a proposal that proposal just post live however we do recommend that people actually you know choose to manually go through proposals just because you know you don't want people posting any kind of proposals on your platform but again it's all up to whoever purchase purchases the script right here we have all the proposals that have been declined obviously if, uh, if the admin receives a proposal and the admin is not okay with that you know proposal the admin can just either request for more modification or the admin can decline the proposal altogether so that's kind of how this section works all right so now let's now let's come back to this page right here so uh, obviously here you can see the different prizes for the different proposals you can see the number of views you know the number of people that actually clicked on that proposal and saw it you can see the number of orders you know for that pr proposal and you have more items right here so you can you can feature a proposal like I showed you guys how uh, users can actually pay to have their proposals featured you know this way you do it so this proposal is already featured so it says already featured um, here again I showed you guys how to deactivate proposals here you view referrals for the different proposals so now I explain this I can explain this to you guys how um, users while creating a proposal can configure an affiliate link you know so basically a link where other users can share on different platforms to have other users per click on that link and purchase that proposals so basically anyone who does that who shares a unique link on a different platform and have others click on that unique link and purchase that proposal this is where you see this is where the seller is gonna see uh, that users account so basically basically this proposal right here this pat created this proposal and he configured if you configured the affiliate link for that proposal and so whoever shares the unique link for this particular proposal this one right here whoever shares that unique link on a different platform and has other people per click on that link and purchase the proposal but is able to see the users who did that who shared that link he can see that right here and he can see if because obviously like I said the admin has to approve approve that you know referral before the seller or the user or the buyer you know receive the funds for that and so um pat is able to see all that information here he's able to see the seller the referral username here and he's able to see if it was approved by the admin or declined by the admin for that particular proposal so that's kind of how that section works so let's go back to my proposals so right here, let's talk about this item right here. So this is vacation mode. So now, sometimes a seller might be going on vacation or a seller might be overbooked and he doesn't, he or she doesn't really want to receive orders for different proposals. That seller, in that, in that case, that seller can turn on vacation mode. So what does this do? So once a seller turns on vacation mode, that seller's proposals are still online they're still live however no other user can purchase that proposal because vacation mode has been turned on so if we click on here and we choose a reason and we activate it it's gonna you know we're gonna go on vacation mode so i'm actually gonna go to the dashboard and you know we're gonna click on a seller that has you know turned on vacation mode so jess so i'm actually gonna go on my other computer and turn on vacation mode for jazz so all right so i've turned on vacation mode for jazz so as you can see we can still see her proposal so if i refresh the page so we can still see her proposal however though if we click on it it shows here that seller vacation mode has been switched to on so basically we cannot we cannot purchase this proposal and just as a hint you can actually if you see here Jess has 22 orders in queue so we can you know just assume that she's probably overbooked and that's why she turned on her vacation mode or maybe she's on vacation you know so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn 
vacation mode off for Jess and I'm gonna refresh this page and as you can see now we can order that proposal alright so let's go back to to my proposals page so now um, now let's talk about oh actually I'd like to show you guys a little about the feature part so so okay so we featured most of these proposals but we haven't featured this one yet so uh, if you want to if any user wants to feature a proposal all that user has to do is just click on that action button right there and click on make proposal feature and this is going to open up this pop-up box and you know here it just gives a, some information about you know the feature you know featuring a proposal and here it just shows the fee and the duration and again this is set by the admin in the admin panel and so that that user now can choose to pay with whatever, whatever payment method so either with um, shopping balance or with PayPal or with, you know credit card PayZa, or bitcoins so we integrated bitcoins into the platform so users can actually pay with their bitcoins or with mobile money so it's kind of all up to the to the uh, buyer so yeah so let's close this let's go ahead and click on add new proposal so right here once a user you know decides to create a proposal the user is gonna come to this page right here this is where the user will fill in the proposal title choose in the proposal main category and the proposal subcategory uh, write in inf you know information about that proposal and so this is an HTML editor so you know users can pretty much style you know the proposal proposal uh, description to however you know the see fit so yeah, uh, so below that we have a section here for instructions to buyers. So basically, um, I've received a lot of questions about this part. Uh, so I'm gonna like explain this, and we're actually gonna create an order where you can see this live. So instruction to buyers. So while a, pr a user, um, as while a seller is creating a proposal, if a seller writes any information here. You know, while another buyer is purchasing that proposal, that proposal doesn't start its countdown until the buyer actually responds to the order. So basically, these are instructions. So once a buyer purchases a proposal, the buyer is gonna see whatever instructions uh, that the seller types on here, and that buyer has to respond to that to that order before the countdown starts. However, if the seller leaves this part empty, then if a buyer purchases this proposal, the countdown is going to start right away, right after you know the purchase is made. But if there's information here, if there's any text here, the countdown doesn't start until the buyer, you know, responds to the order. So, in order to you know kind of make this clear, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna purchase an order we're, we're gonna purchase a proposal real quick so we're gonna look for um, the seller Patricia or we can actually just go on here and click on search and so this has found you know so because we're looking for Patricia so and that that's kind of how the search works so you can type the proposal you're looking for or the kind of thing if you type PHP is gonna open up all the PHPs and stuff the other proposals related to PHP and all that so now let's go ahead and order this proposal from Patricia so if we click on order now and here uh, let's pay with a uh, balance and again you can pay with different options you can pay with PayPal you can actually pay with your credit card and this you know this was integrated through stripe so you know this allows users to pay with their credit card card information so uh, so let's actually pay with our 
credit card so if we if we come to the purchase script oh, sorry we clicked on PayPal instead uh, unfortunately we haven't configured PayPal in the admin panel yet but um, you can actually test it out with the other payment methods but PayPal does work perfectly so let's click on order now so here we have the different test cards people can use so if we if we choose if we choose uh, the credit card and we'll click on there we can come here and actually copy this number paste it here and here we have uh, 10 20 22 so 10 uh, let's see uh, 10 22 and 273 here we put 273 I mean this information you can really put any any item you know that's greater than the current date but yeah so we're gonna pay now with a uh, stripe so it's on test mode that's why we can pay with this uh, test card so we're gonna hit with hit pay and so the payment has gone through and so once you purchase a proposal you're gonna see this fancy section here with this loader you know and right here this is the proposal so now this is what I was trying to explain. So basically, that section uh, uh, instructions to buyer, uh, Patricia actually put this information right here. And unless the buyer responds to this, the order is not actually going to start the countdown. But if Patric Patricia didn't put anything for uh, instructions to buyers, then the countdown will start right after the purchase was made. So basically, if um, if we respond to this. Um, So let's say we're adding some, we're giving Patricia some information about the project. And we hit send. So now, as you can see, the countdown starts. Again, if there was no instructions here, if there were no instructions here, the countdown would just start after the purchase. So that's kind of how it works. So that's, I have received a lot of questions about that. So that's kind of why I had to explain it in detail. So again, this place gives you the summary. So it shows here that this item is actually in progress. So if the countdown goes down and um, we haven't, the countdown reaches zero, 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 it's going to be the show that the order is late. And in that case, you know, a pad as a buyer can choose to cancel the order. So that's kind of how that part works. So let's go back to my proposals. Let's click on add new proposal. So yeah, that's a brief explanation about the instruction to buyers. So if we leave this empty, then the countdown starts right after the buyer has purchased the proposal. Here we put uh, the proposal tags, which are good for SEO. Then here, this is where we set in the affiliate link. So basically, if we want other users to be able to share the unique link, we're just gonna click on yes. So again, it's optional. We're gonna click on yes, then we're gonna choose how much we want. You know, we wanna award people who share the link and have other people purchase it through the link. So here we've chosen to give um, any user who does that 10%. All right, so here we set the amount of days we can deliver this proposal, and here we can we choose the image. So now we had to add a fancy. Uh, crop tool just because uh, initially when we built the script we required that um, uh, pictures be this this uh, this pixels but since a lot of people had problems with this you know because not a lot of people knew how to like resize their images and stuff like that we decided to recently add a, a, a crop tool where people can you know just all they have to do is really just um, choose their image and you know they can easily just resize it so basically if I refresh this page and choose 
and choose that image we're gonna get that crop to uh, we can crop it to whatever and once we crop the image once we crop it it now you know it now automatically you know creates it in this dimension right here and we can add as we can add we can actually add three more uh, images to this proposal or we can actually add a video right here after we've done that we then hit to proceed to next step so basically what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually just gonna hit edit on one of the proposals so I can uh, just show you guys all the steps so we're gonna I did this proposal right here so right here as you can see you know there's nothing here for instruction to buyers uh, this seller really doesn't want to you know Pat doesn't really want to do the referral thing with this proposal and here as you can see there's an image and there's a video right here you can remove the video then the next part is uh, pricing so users can either choose to set pricing based on different packages or they can choose to just do a fixed price which is just one price so that's the how this section and you can you easily add items to the to the packages just by inserting attributes all right so then the extras users can actually add extras to their proposals and they can always delete them or, you know add as many as as the one stuff like that so now we're done with the proposal section we're, we're done with the buyer we actually did the buyer request section now let's go to the revenues so basically revenues are all the this is all the this is the revenue the uh, pat received on the platform so basically for all his proposals other users have purchased this is this is kind of like the page that records all of that so now I've received a couple of questions you know about pending clearance so remember how I explained to you guys how you know when a user when a user purchases a proposal from a seller that seller delivers the order and that user has to complete the order by you know rating the order or if the seller doesn't if the buyer doesn't do that the order is going to auto complete however the admin can set i'm going to show you guys this once we get to the admin the admin can set a certain number of days for withdrawal so basically when a seller delivers an order and the order is completed the seller there's a number of days the admin can set before the seller is able to receive the funds for that so that those funds are you know considered as pending clearance so basically this item right here if we click on this item here so again you can just easily click on view now view order and it opens up the item so this right now the pad earned 33 dollars and again you see the the order was completed and so um so pad earned 33 three dollars and say the seller the admin said seven days so pat has to wait for seven days before he's able to you know before this amount is able to add to this available for withdrawal so within that seven days it's just going to be considered as pending clearance and these are all the items that are pending clearance so sellers have the opportunity to withdraw money from to, withdraw money to their PayPal accounts they can withdraw money to their mobile money accounts and they can also withdraw money to their Bitcoin wallet account so again the platform you uh, every user can purchase with Bitcoin you know however the admin has to set all of this up in the admin panel but once everything is set up you know users can purchase with Bitcoin you know they can withdraw to their Bitcoin wallet addresses and stuff like that so that's kind of the thing with the uh, request revenues page so now let's go now to the buying section so we're done with the selling section which is mostly for set uh, people who are actually selling on the platform so sellers so now let's go to the buying section obviously buyers can be sellers and sellers can be buyers you know not every user can do everything so there's sometimes that sellers will purchase from other sellers so in this case pat is the buyer so these are all the orders pat has purchased all the proposals pat has purchased or all the orders he has made so again it's all 
there are different tabs so obviously all the orders that have been delivered to pat or all the orders that pat has completed by actually rating them and all the cancelled orders so and here you can kind of see this status for that so uh, if we click on supreme graphics so here we see that uh, the seller for this one is Patricia and we can see that you know it's almost like it's almost it's less than one day left and yeah so Pat can we actually just purchased this not too long ago and so if Pat doesn't like if Pat wants to cancel this order he can easily just click on here you know if he choose a reason and he, he can type more stuff and he can easily just cancel this order and once he cancels this order once he hits that submit cancel request you, you can see that that resolution center item just disappears and here it says I want to cancel so Patricia is gonna see this cancel request and she can either accept it or decline it if she accepts it then the money is gonna now be refunded to the buyer which is Pat so let's go back to orders So, so here we see all the delivered, so there's nothing delivered at the moment. Then here we see all the, the orders that have been completed. So the ones that Pat has actually manually completed by rating them. So if we click on this, then here again, this bar kind of shows you the summary of the order. So it shows you that delivery submitted. And since we're just a buyer, we're, if we're a seller, we're going to see delivery, order delivered and we see how much all we as the you know or pat has earned but since he's just the buyer in this case it's just gonna say delivery is submitted and we can always update our reviews so if we go back to orders and if we go to cancel so these are the items that pat has manually canceled so if we click on this one right here so as you can see pat canceled this order and it was refunded the payment was refunded to the buyer which is which is Pat so the seller is uh, rank SEO and so Pat submitted a cancellation request and the seller just accepted it so yeah all right so let's go back to so we're done with uh, the order section for buying so now let's go to purchases so now I know you guys remember how we went through the revenues Purchases is a little different. So purchases kind of just shows you everything that's going on. So this is kind of like the page that shows you all the expenses and all the revenues. So so obviously this is mostly used by buyers. So you know like so the items for revenues will be like you know like if an item is being refunded, canceled order, payment refunded to shopping balance, and the you know. The user can just click on this to see that order and these are just the items so basically Pat purchased a couple of stuff so like he purchased the proposal with his shopping cart you know his shopping balance uh, he purchased some stuff with his credit card you know so all that all that all those items appear here so the items in red are obviously the expenses and these ones are just the money coming in so from refunds and all that all right, so that's it with the purchases. Now let's go to the favorites page. So earlier in the video, I did click on some items that added to the favorites page. So this is kind of like the favorites page, and here, you know, users can share this on their Facebook, on social media platforms, or they can just add everything to their cards. So if you see this three on the card right now, it's gonna update to five. So now it's five so it moves from the favorites page to the cards page and you know these are all the items here and we can just proceed to pay all of them so if we click on proceed to payment so here we can either pay with our shopping balance or we can pay we have different options here we can also pay with bitcoin which is you know through coin payments and so on let's go back to dashboard and so we're done with favorites and now let's come to this tab 
So I showed you guys the buyer request page, but I didn't show you guys the managed request because there's some Pat as a seller has posted some projects on the platform and other sellers have contacted him to be able to do that project. So if people post requests, there's actually a whole page, this page right here, where they can actually manage all of that. So right here, these are all the active requests that Pat has posted on the platform. And you know, here we have different tabs as well. So you know, Pat can easily just you know pause a request. So and once he pauses a request, it's gonna appear here. So once and a request is paused it actually it's not gonna be live on the website anymore it's just gonna you know be paused it's just gonna be here and Pat can easily just activate that request and it's gonna go back to the active request and it's gonna be live on the website pending approval these are just requests that uh, Pat has created and the admin hasn't gotten to it yet so the admin has to approve every request so you know if the if the admin hasn't gotten to the request yet it's considered to be pending approval if the admin has gotten to it and you know declined that request then it's just gonna be here and the user can easily just delete that so here we see the different offers so we can see the different offers we've received for that request so basically pat posted the request and for this item right here he has just one request so one request which is really unfortunate but he has just one request and you know this is timestamp this the budget so pat can easily just click on view offers so here pat is gonna see you know kind of like what he posted the request he posted the budget he has for the budget he has and you know the request date and all that and this seller Jess she pretty much claims she can do it and so that's why you see this right here because she sent an offer so if more sellers send offers you're gonna see that you know just stack up up here so if Pat wants to order this from obviously Pat might decide to click on uh, the user profile which is Jess's profile and you know see more information about Jess because this is gonna open up the profile her profile page and if Pat is happy with everything he can either contact her first or he can just order if he clicks on order now it's gonna open up this place and here this is uh, Jess's page so remember how I showed you guys where uh, a seller can pretty much type out the pitch on you know pretty much trying to convince the uh, buyer that he or she can do that task so you kind of see that here and this is just the request so now the user can either pay with any of these payment methods all right so that's uh, pretty much about it with um, the manage request page so now let's go ahead let's go to the post new request so so this page is similar to the page on uh, to the uh, item on the home page which I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit uh, but once you come to the new request page you know you kind of have this help tool here that kind of shows you that kind of tells you what's going on for the different sections so here the user types out the title types out the project de description or can just upload a file you know either a word file PDF file or whatever then the user has to choose a category because this is the category that is gonna send the request to the right sellers so chooses a category uh, chooses the date the user wants the project to be done in and the budget and post the request and this request is just gonna go to the admin first and they want the admin approves it it's gonna go now to the right sellers now uh, a user can access this page by simply going to the home page and clicking on post a request all right so we're done with that section um post the request so now let's go to the contact so again this is just contact uh contact book so basically these are all the buyers that have purchased from pat and pat can easily just open up the history between uh him and the buyer so basically if he clicks on history it's gonna open up this page and these are all the orders uh patricia has purchased from pat 
and Pat can easily just click to open up that that order. So if Pat clicks on test, you know it's gonna open up that order, and Pat earned forty five dollars there. And it's also the same thing for sellers. So these are all the sellers Pat has purchased proposals from, and he can, again he can click on history and just see the history of that, uh, or he can just go to the sellers propo uh, profile page, or he can open up the chat. All right, so that's it with you know the contacts page. So here he sees how many orders he's completed with that seller, with that buyer, and stuff like that amount he's earned from that buyer and stuff like that the last order did um, now let's go over to the referral system again I said there are two referral systems on the platform there's the user referrals and there's the proposal referrals now the user referrals this is set up by the admin so basically the admin will set up a prize whereby a user can share this link a user will share this link on his or her you know profile page like you know profile like Facebook or Twitter or whatever platform will share this link and have other people click on this link and sign up to this website and purchase you know proposals so once that happens you know that user will be awarded five dollars after it's being approved so here uh, Patricia <coughs> so you know this kind of where that item kind of shows so here as you can see, Pat Pat shared this on his Facebook wall. So he shared this on his Facebook wall, and his friend Patricia used this link to you know create an account on the platform. And she even purchased uh, a proposal. And so it's pending because the admin hasn't gotten to it yet. So once the admin gets to it and approves it, then it's gonna be it's the, the amount is gonna go now to Patricia's account. If the admin declines it, then that all that information is actually going to show here. So if it's approved, the status will be approved. If it's declined, it's just going to be declined here. And so that's kind of how it works. So this is kind of like another way for users to make money on the platform. So yeah. Now proposal referrals. Now this shows. Now this shows all the so now remember how I showed you guys how to create while creating a proposal users can configure a section where they can uh, pretty much award other users who share uh, the unique link for that proposal on different platforms and have other people purchase it so this kind of records every proposal every proposal that has been shared and uh, every amount of uh, you know that has been made through that now I showed you guys this right here if we go to proposal and we click on if we go to proposal maybe we we'll click on um, view referrals now this proposal for this proposal right here this shows you just for that particular proposal that proposal alone uh, the person who referred and you know the person who purchased it you know through the unique link and stuff like that however this is more of a global section where you can see it for all the different proposals the one I just showed you before is just for that particular proposal but this one is for every proposal so it's gonna record the proposal name and the, you know the date and if it's pending or declined or approved so that's kind of how this section works so now let's go to the to inbox messages. Now we had an older inbox message system, and you know a lot of users wanted an upgrade. They wanted something more modern. So we upgraded the inbox system to look like this. So yeah, so this is how it looks like when you clicked on inbox. And if you want to chat with a user, all you gotta do is you know just click on that user, and it just opens up. You know. A bunch of stuff you can see the history between you and that user um, this section here you can actually see your buying history with that user or your selling history so basically all the proposals that user has purchased from you or all the proposals you've purchased from that user and if you click if we click on buying history it's gonna open up a page so basically these are all uh, the proposals just purchased from us and you know again we can we can click on it and it's gonna take us to that and we kind of see the stages for that and stuff like that so 
So if we click right on there on uh, JS. So yeah, so that's how this section works. Um, here we can see the image of the <coughs> of the user. We can see the seller level. Some more information about the seller. Then right here we have a couple of things going on. So here, if we if the seller if the user is typing on the other end, so I'm gonna be typing on the other end. You actually see that Jess is typing, so it shows you here that she's typing, and this is real time. Shows you that she's typing, and here, if we're typing, we can decide to send our messages in two ways. So we can either decide to click on send manually, click on send after we type a message, we click on send and it sends, or we can choose to hit enter and it sends a message. So basically. If I type here, I can just click on send and it's going to send that yeah. message. So for here, we can also add emoji. So if I, you know, I can click on this and again, let's just close this up. Yeah. And that, you know, that goes to Jazz. We can do other stuff like you know if we wanna send give uh, send an offer to Jess, we can easily just click on create offer. And once we click on create offer, it's gonna open up uh, this screen that kind of shows all our proposals. So now I can easily just uh, you know choose choose any proposal, and you know so basically if Jess and I have talked about. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and close this real quick. So I actually clicked on that so many times, so that's kind of why I did this. But one second. So, all right. So we're gonna click on that. So, uh, so if I choose on this right here and I click on so basically if Jess and I have talked and we've agreed that on a on a price and stuff like that I can now click on my proposal and I hit go next and here I can add some information that's what this cost then I choose the number of days I said I can deliver that and I do that so I'm gonna send this now to Jess So that's gonna send uh, that offer to Jess, as you can see right here. Uh, this is the offer I just sent to Jess. And now, Jess on the other hand, she, I'm gonna accept the offer. So if you notice right here, I'm not gonna refresh the page, but everything's gonna be real time. So on the other hand, Jen, Jess is gonna accept the proposal, accept the offer. So uh, on my other computer, I'm gonna click on accept, and I'm gonna order it. And as you can see, it shows here offer accepted and we can easily just click on here and it takes us to the order or we click on here and it takes us to the order and like I said each I think that comes in you know if you're receiving an order if you're receiving a message you're just gonna see a pop-up that slides here that shows you so it shows Jess has sent you an order and that's because she accepted this offer and clicking on this is just gonna take us to the other page or this is gonna take us to the other page alright so <clears throat> another cool thing about the platform is you know this attached feature so basically if I attach an image so the image is attached and I hit and I send this mm -hmm. So if you notice, you, uh, users actually have a preview of images. So if you send an image, we made it in a way that the user can see a little bit about that image. So that's kind of how it works. Then the user can download that. So now uh, there are other items like the start. We have uh, Marcus Red, you know, because uh, right now this is grayed out just because, you know, just because uh, we haven't read this message yet so when you see a message with this background it means we haven't read the message yet it can also mean that we're actually on that we've actually clicked on that message and watch chatting with that person right now 
all right so um all right so let's just refresh this page real quick all right so um so right here we can choose to start this message so basically if i want to read the message later i can either choose to start it or if i just want to archive the message i can click on archive if you want to delete the message i can delete the message so let's start the message and what that happens is it's actually gonna the seconds okay so it starts the message and here we can filter this conversation based on either start or archive so if we choose start you know so it shows us all the items that have been started so we start this one so if we unstart it so here if we go to start so it's gonna just show us these other items. All right, so let's go back to all conversations. Um, so right here, you can also see the timestamp with uh, the different people you've ch chatted with, like we're chatting with Jess, and the last time we sent a message was two minutes ago. And you can we can also do stuff like search. So basically, if we have so many people here in our chat section, we can easily just search as well. So and that searches instantly so that's kind of that's kind of brief a brief overview of the message six system here so here we also see if there's that user is online we see the user's local time which is uh, uh, 12 50 p.m. and stuff like that all right let's go back to dash to our dash board So now we're done with this. Now this is a section for all the notifications. So here we see all the notifications. So obviously uh, notifications with this background are just notifications we haven't read yet. You know, if the notification has a white background, you know, it means we've already read the notification. So right here, uh, sorry, right here, it's the same thing. So if we actually click and click on this one so you discover that since we clicked on that one the that background disappeared it became white and if we click on notifications it shows here that it has a background now and we can delete as many as we want or we can just let them there and just clicking on it is gonna take us to um to whatever that notification is linked into then here you see the the picture of the either the admin or the user so now let's go to profile and this is our profile so right here on our profile we can at this section here we can add as many languages as we want so these languages are lo loaded in by the admin and we can choose you know the level so basically if I choose French you know I can choose you know fluent on stuff like that so French is already there we can add skills we can um, add whatever skill here and we add the skill level so these items are being added in the back end by the back end admin panel by the admin then here we have all our proposals and you know Pat can create a new proposal by just clicking on create new proposal then here we have all the reviews for all the proposals so this just kind of like gets all those reviews and so here we can actually filter them we can filter them negative reviews and we can filter positive positive reviews all right so now the next item to look at is the settings so profile settings so this just kind of has information about you know that that user this is pretty much self-explanatory so 
uh, account settings here so here we add information like a uh, PayPal email or uh, so so basically you know we're gonna withdraw more from the platform to these different uh, um, payment methods so this is where we actually add our accounts so here we we'll put our Bitcoin wallet address and stuff like that so remember how I said on the system that users actually receive uh, messages real time and you could hear the sound so basically we can either choose to get the sound or if we don't if we don't like the sound we can just choose no and update that and that's we're not gonna get the sound anymore so if I hit update if I go back to if I go back to my other computer <clears throat> and send Patrice and send Pat a message. So that comes that comes right here, but we get no sound just because we turn that to off. So let's go ahead and turn it back to on. And again, this once you're on the platform, miss no matter what page you're on, if you receive a message, it's just gonna slide from here. So that's kind of how we made it. So people are always aware about everything that's going on, especially for sellers. You know, they always see their orders come in real time, see their messages come in real time, and stuff like that. All right, let's go ahead and update it back to yes. Okay, here you can change your password. Then the place for deactivation. So now, no one can actually deactivate their account unless this is zero. So unless the shopping balance is zero, you know, will a user be able to deactivate the account? Like right now, if I click on this, nothing is gonna happen. But once this is zero, another menu is gonna appear here with different reasons for leaving, you know, the platform. You know, all the user has to do after this is zero, choose that choose an option then click deactivate account and that's gonna do all of this so pretty much deactivate the entire account so now the next thing I would like to show you guys is is the knowledge bank page so if you click on knowledge bank so this just have has articles that you know will help users to use the platform more. So uh, all the articles here are being loaded in by the admin and the admin panel, I'm, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Then the the categories again are being loaded by the admin. So once the admin creates a category, the admin either decides if that category is should appear on the left side or the right side. And once the admin creates uh, obviously an article, the admin is gonna assign it to one of the categories. So that's kind of how this works. So if this is a, an article and we click on it, it's going to open up a page about that article. And if the user has more, more questions, the user can just click on contact us. Also, the search, the search bar works pretty well too. So if we type account and click on search, that's actually going to open up bring out all those articles with account and we can just click on that and it's gonna take us now to that article so that's kinda how that works so the next thing the next thing I'd like to show you guys is the customer support section so right here so if users have problems with the platform, you know, problems with the uh, order or something, they can easily just come on here and choose whatever reason. So if they choose order support, they click on that. It's going to open them a form. So this form has <clears throat> the subject, the message, the order number. So I showed you guys where you guys can see an order number on the order page. So this is very important because it helps the admin locate that order. And here the user chooses it. The user is a buyer or seller, and again, the difference is proposals. So, if that user has proposals, the user can choose seller, and you know, if there are any attachment, that user can attach something. And here, this is for Google Recapture, and this is the the key is being added in the back end just to have this appear here. 
and this is just to make sure everyone is human everyone who uses the platform is human all right so now if you notice uh, this form has some items like order number, user role. However, there's some uh, uh, tickets that don't really relate to that. Something like report a bug. If we click on that, that's going to open up another form without order and stuff. So it, it just has just these items. So now, um, users cannot actually uh, send uh, tickets through this if they're logged out. And just because uh, we created it in the way that a user has to be logged in in order to, you know, send a support request, and that's just because uh, the admin would then receive everything about that user, so that will help the admin, you know, fix the issue faster. All right, so that's um, a little bit about the customer support page. Uh, now this page right here the how it works page this is more of like um, it tells users how the different items work you know how uh, you know the buyers gives information about buyers you know the process and uh, the process for sellers so this is mostly for marketing and it's looking and this is included in the script as well so now we also have a page for we have a terms and condition page that can be edited in the admin panel as well. So uh, this page right here. So if we click on terms and conditions, and it's gonna take us to this page right here that contains, and you can edit this from the admin panel. All right, guys, that's a brief overview of uh, the front end website uh, now I didn't really touch on everything but I tried to touch on the most important parts um, you guys can actually test out the script entirely the demo is always gonna be online so you can always test it out and if you have more questions you can always ask me um, this section right here this contains all the main categories now more just contains more of the items because we we discovered that we cannot put every category on this header right here so we just created this uh, feature right here that will just load in more of those categories all right now let's actually go ahead and test out the demo the the admin panel demo website so if we go on here we click to sign in So once we sign into the admin panel, we receive something like this. So it's gonna give us, you know, the number of users on the platform, the number of active orders, the number of support requests. So you know, people go to customer support page and send requests. So we have three right here. The number of pending uh, uh, proposals that other sellers have submitted, you know, and a pending approval. So we can see that there, and we can easily see that by clicking on this different items or you know we can easily access them too by clicking on this item and this just also gives us a count so here uh, general settings we this is where we actually you know configure some items related to the script especially some items in the header so we have our keywords here for SEO we have you know the site author so we can choose to this is where we upload the uh, favicon so this item right here so here we have we can choose to have our logo as an image or text so here we chose image so here we have the site logo and we have the email the site email logo so basically I forgot to mention one thing almost everything about the script sends out an email so when you receive a message when you know when you your order your proposal is approved or whatever everything sends out a, an email and that's why it's good to set up your your mail service settings here you know just so emails don't go to people's spams but everything sends out an email and these are some examples of an email so basically this is a mess a message from Jess so this is how it looks like um, right here we have an order from Jess so this is kinda how it looks like you know have the proposal the quantity the duration this is kinda how the email that comes in and here we your proposal has been successfully approved so after an admin approves um, 
a proposal the user is gonna receive an email like this and so on there are just so many emails that come through and so you can decide what logo to use and as you can see we you chose this logo and that's kind of what appears here it can be whatever so here this is where you you know put your SAG email um, here you put the Google recapture key and it's actually very easy to get this you know when you get the key you just update this section so now the site comes with a default HTML5 video player so basically users can upload videos and you know other users can watch those videos but if you want premium quality quality videos then we added this option where you can create an account on GW player and you know all you gotta do is get this code from your dashboard and once you put it on here then it's gonna upgrade the video quality for every seller on the platform so now this this section now just you know decide the different parameters that you configure for you know the different level for sellers so the level one sellers the level two sellers and so on and so forth so you just kind of configure it all that here so here this is where you decide if you want if the admin wants to manually approve proposals or if the admin chooses no then once a seller creates a proposal the proposal is going to be automatically you know posted live so i do recommend that you set this to yes because you know you don't want people posting any kind of thing so uh send confirmation email after sign up so basically when a user creates an account on the platform you know that user you know this is where you determine if you want that user to receive um, a confirmation email so what how this works is once the user creates an account there's gonna be like a top bar on the user's account that says please confirm email and if you don't want this to happen if you set this to no then users don't have to confirm their emails so this right here if you want if you want users to if you want to receive an email each time a user creates a proposal then you set this to yes and it's gonna send it to this email right here this email right here so if you set this to yes each time a user creates a proposal you receive an email then here you just choose the, the currency you know whatever currency uh, you have then this is where you set in the referral so basically if you want people to share a certain link and have other people sign up to the platform you set set it here to yes or no and this is where you set the price that you award people who do that so this is just marketing expense so this is where you set in the order complete so basically when a, a seller delivers an order so how many days do you want that order to be delivered on until it's you know automatically completed you know because sometimes like I said some buyers don't actually complete the orders because buyers have to manually go and rate an order to complete it and so if that buyer doesn't do that the order is going to be auto completed in whatever amount of days you set here all right so that's a brief overview of the general settings the layout settings just have to do with changing certain items on the front end website so So, so when you log out, you kind of see that fancy loader there. Um, so layout just pretty much deals with changing items on this web on this section right here. Like you can change the items on the footer. You can change the uh, text on the main slider. So the text here. You can change the different sliders. Change the different proposal cards and so on and so forth and uh, this section right here is you can actually add CSS to override certain things so basically um, a good way to do it is some users might want certain things changed so if you want certain things changed you could easily just come on here and click on um, inspect then um, if you want something changed so basically if you click on this right here and hover so like that so if we want a background for this right here so we see that the class that was used was dot market and you know the background right now is white you know we can always experiment we can change the color here um, 
and if we're okay with it we can actually copy whatever we've changed so basically if we change the color to uh, let's say let's say black obviously this doesn't look really nice but you know if we're happy with that we can now copy this here we can copy this item here then uh, you know then paste it then come on here and paste it there um, then we hit save if the change doesn't work right away then you know we can easily just add important to overwrite you know the other style file so that's kind of like a a quick way to like do changes without necessarily going into the code so like you can do like extra tiny little um, CSS changes right here all right so let's go now to payment settings so the payment settings you can configure certain things like you know commission percentage uh, so this is kind of what uh, the, you take from every other um, uh, so here days before withdrawal so remember how I explain how a seller delivers an order and that order is completed by the buyer but you know the buyer goes there and rate the rates the order so um, the admin wants six days after so once an order is completed uh, the seller can only withdraw that money after six days from when that order was completed so this is kind of way you set the days uh, then here you set a, a minimum withdrawal limit then this is where you set in the fee to for people to feature the proposal so it costs ten dollars to purchase to uh, feature a proposal for two days and this is just a, uh, a processing fee for uh, when people are purchasing proposals this pops up so then you configure your different payment settings through this section right here all right so here this is where you configure your mail settings so this is <coughs> pretty much straightforward <coughs> as well um, update so application update so so since we're gonna be adding a bunch of features every single time we created an update section in the admin panel where once we release more features we can we're gonna create an update file that the admin can easily just click on that update section right here and upload that update file so this section right here is obviously disabled right now for security purposes but um, right here is usually a button where the user can up upload that update file and that's gonna upload update the entire script so yeah that's um, so here you can see all the proposals on the platform you can filter them based on these different criteria here here you can you can do a bunch of things you can um, you can make a proposal feature so the admin has the power to like manually feature a proposal you can pause a proposal you can look at a proposal and you can delete a proposal and stuff like that and there are different items here where he can you know filter through too <clears throat> all right so other items like other so basically we're gonna go ahead and log back in just so I explain some of these items here so this is where we get the reports so basically if um, if say uh, Pat clicks on Jesse's proposal right here so he clicks on Jesse's proposal and he clicks on this report so if he clicks on report and re submits this report you know so the admin is gonna see that here proposal reports so he's gonna see the ones for messages and orders and these other sections right here so if we click on proposal reports we see that we have two right now so Tyrone reported this proposal and his reason was that it's not original content he says it's not original and the admin can you know look into it and he can delete <coughs> it from this list right here so now inbox messages so admins can actually read every uh, message on the system so is admin can read message easily by just you know clicking on that message and he can read more about it so Jess had a chat with 
this person. So here you kind of see uh, you see the sender and you see this receiver. So we go to and you can filter it. So these are different paginations and you can filter it to you know different pages. All right. So um, right here, admins can also give reviews. Admins can insert reviews. Admins can see reviews for different things. Admin can use this page to, you know, once there's a dispute between a buyer and a seller, you know, during investigating, admins can also come to this page and, you know, read more about the reviews for that, you know, buyer or seller. All right. So here we this is where so I showed you guys how to create a, a request. So once the request comes in, the buyer, the admin has to either approve that request or decline the request. So if the admin approves the request, it's gonna show up on the on 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 the feed. So if admin if this admin approves this request, it's gonna show up on the feed of, of sellers that have proposals under the category that this request was is, is related to. So if we if we actually go here and go to manage request and go to unapproved request. So if the admin declines this request, you know, that's gonna appear in this place right here. <clears throat> so here we just see all the categories, you know, we see so all the categories on the system. You know the categories then it has their category description that you know can be edited you can edit them you can delete a category or you can add a new category so then these are the subcategories pretty much the same thing um, so if we view subcategory we see that this is uh, a subcategory and you know we can see the parent category which is the main category so when you you're adding a, a subcategory you need to choose a main category <clears throat> so here we these are the different delivery times so as you can see there the delivery times are up to 15 days so this kind of way you set that so <clears throat> users see this when they're trying to post the request as well they see all these delivery times too all right so now the next thing is seller languages so we have seller language and seller skills and again this shows we can see this item actually right here so if we click on my profile and you know if we're trying to insert a new language you know these items right here and the items for skills right here are being configured here. So this is where you add all these items, seller language, seller skills. Then this is where we receive customer support. So if we click on the support settings, so this is what people will see. You know, this is what people will see when they go to that page. And um And if we click here, support request. So this is this is uh, the different support requests. So these are the different support requests that have been submitted by users. And we can either, if we want to close this one, we all we just gotta do is type close and hit, you know, change status. Uh, if we go, if we actually go back to the home page, and uh, if we go to oh if we go to customer support so these items on this list right here these items on this list right here are being inserted here so right here so now the next thing here is uh, coupons so uh, we can add coupons for different proposals. When you're adding a, a coupon, you have to choose a particular proposal. And the way coupons work is, we're actually gonna, so let's search for a proposal that has a coupon. So if we look here, we discover that maths and physics tutor. So this one has a coupon code and the coupon code is demo. So it takes off 10%. So let's actually go there. So let's click on, 
this so let's go ahead and order so we hit order now and um, let's try something else let's try maybe uh, let's just try demo so the price is 20% 20 dollars so it has to take off 10% but since this is not the right coupon code if you try to apply that as you can see it says your coupon code is not valid so under 20 dollars so now let's try demo and let's apply this so as you can see your coupon code has been applied successfully and as you can see it left from 18 dollars to uh, from twenty dollars to eighteen, so we took off the ten percent. So that's kind of how coupon codes work. Um, the next thing are the slides. So here we can. These are the slides when you actually log in. So you can add more here. This is a page for terms and conditions. You can add more terms. You can you know edit them. Then here, these are the items for all users. So this is where you see all users on the platform. So you see all users and we can actually navigate through this right here. We can do a bunch of things to the users. We can log in as the user, you know, so basically if I click log in as Patricia, it's going to offer, it's going to log me in without me like putting in a, a username or password. Uh, this section right here was just, you know, maybe the, the admin is trying to fix it, uh, help solve a dispute so the admin can actually decide to log in or you, the admin can click on user details and this is going to open up this page with more information about that user, the user's cat um, proposals, how much the user is making and just more information about the user, user's IP address, user's country and all that. <coughs> so if we go back, so so right here and the admin can ban users too so let's ban Patricia so so now that we've banned Patricia let's actually try to log in as Patricia and see what happens so if we try to Try to log in as Patricia. So we're gonna get this message. You have been blocked from accessing this site. Please contact customer support. So that's kind of the, the message we get. However, if we if we actually go back and we can actually if she solved whatever issue she had, you know, we can actually go back and just click here. That kind of like unblocks here. So if we go back to the script and just refresh the page, so as you can see now, Patricia can log in. So that's kind of how that section works. Um, then here we can see all the orders. So basically, all the orders that have gone through the system. Um, if we want to look at a specific order, you know, we can actually just click on it, or we can, we can, if we know the, the, the obviously, if, take for example, someone opens up a customer support ticket, and you know, we get the, we get the order number, and we can just click, put that number here, and filter the order, and this is going to bring that particular order. So this is it right here, and we can actually we can either cancel the order, and, or we can open up the order details. And here we we see the order, and we kind of see the chat history. So it's, it shows here now that seller has not yet accepted cancellation request from buyer. So the admin can manually cancel this order if he sees that that's the thing to do, and stuff like that. So now right here <clears throat> we see withdraw so once a user withdraws to paypal or withdraws to whatever payment method this is kind of where the admin sees that so the admin sees the payment method the amount and the date so this just shows 
the admin a log of all that. So right here, uh, these are all the referrers. You know, so these are so the admin creates an, a referral and the admin. Um, uh, so the admin creates a, a referral and the admin puts a certain amount that if anyone you know take post that link on their on on their platforms and have other people use the link to create an account you know this kind of way the admin sees that as you can see when we went to that we saw that you know Pat had referred Patricia so referred by and so we saw Patricia and this is where the admin can either approve that or decline it. So if the admin approves this, the amount is gonna go to Patricia. So this kind of how this part works. Um, this one, this part right here is for the different proposals. You know, after the unique links have been created. So here we can see that the seller just created that affiliate link, and you know, Pat posted the link on his Facebook, and his friend purchased through that link. You know, and so now the admin has to either approve or decline it. <clears throat> so now files just shows all the files on the system. So basically, when a, a user creates a, a a proposal, you know, all that, all those info, all those files actually come in here, and you you can filter it with different pages. So right here, this is for the knowledge knowledge bank. Um, like I showed you guys the different category um, um, titles, so the how to log in, the recent request, and it's either left on the left side or the right side. So basically, if we if we try to edit this, we can decide to put this on the right side. So it's either on the left side or on the right side. And uh, so once we create, <clears throat> once we create an article, you know, like if we try to set the different articles here. So if we try to create an article, we either choose what uh, category we want it to be on. So if we hit on add new article. So here we choose if it's active or not, then we choose the category. Alright, so this section right here is for languages. Languages. So. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed with the new demo, but you can actually translate the website to whatever language you want. <clears throat> and once you do that, you actually set, do the translations from the admin panel. So when you add a language, when we click on add language, so right now we have these different languages. You add the language title and you add the language flag. So once you do that, Then you click on uh, settings, and this actually is we actually disabled this option for you know security reasons. But in this page, you can actually there are different words that you you can translate in such a way that when someone comes to your website and you know chooses the language, say French, it's gonna translate the entire website, and the person can toggle back and forth. So yeah, um, that's it with languages. So now here the admin. So you can uh, the admin can add as many admins as he wants. And you know here this place just shows shows a log of what the different admins have done. So right now we have just one admin, and it kind of shows like we just unblocked a user. So that showed here and all that stuff here. So guys, this is uh, this is really just a brief overview of the entire website. So a brief overview of the demo script. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the back end. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of features that I didn't really like talk on, you know, in great detail. But uh, you can just test out the script and kind of see how everything works. And if you guys have any questions, you guys can always just contact me on, you know. On my several different um, profiles. So, 
if you have any modifications if you purchase the gig to do script and you have whatever modification you want just let us know and we can work on that too we do take modification we do take modification requests as well as if you have any projects like any projects you want to build from scratch uh, we do take that as well on Pixina Studio